and thanks for joining us today. So next, as part of our innovations presentation, we try and highlight um, a new program or just something that's interesting and unique, especially in terms of innovation. And so this month we are joined by AJ Wilson. I just got to meet AJ Wilson with KDOT and the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Do I get the clicker? I'd love to. Yeah, you can also move the arrow buttons on the keyboard. I move around too much. Oh, that's okay. Um, yes, so I'm AJ Wilson. I'm the area engineer for KDOT down in Winfield. I have Cowley, Sumner, and Harper counties are in my jurisdiction. So I was asked to come and give a brief update on, well, I guess I should use a microphone. I can't walk around that much. So... <clears throat> Uh, update on what how we've been using UAS uh, systems in KDOT. So before I get going, um, I have to admit that getting my drone stuck in a tree wasn't the worst thing that happened to me, but it's up there. That's, that, was, that was a joke. That was a joke. Thank you. So, <clears throat> so yes, there was my background. Um, yeah, I went to K-State, and um, this was me back at the championship last year. That guy probably looks a lot younger than who you see right here because um, this joined my life a little bit ago. So she was six weeks old and two days. So it's a crazy madhouse. Um, if anyone ever asks you what it's like to have five kids, it's just like my favorite comedian says, imagine you're drowning and someone hands you a baby. That's been my life. So forgive me if, if I stutter, if I seem like I'm out of it. <clears throat> anyway, so it was back in 17. Um, how much time do you, do you want me to use here? I can talk for as long as you want. All right, I can, I'll, 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 I'll shorten this a little bit. So back in 17, there was a project that was over a high uh, river, and it was a rather big one. Um, you see what was before and after there. And it was significant, and it was something that you couldn't really see from the, from the highway. So I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to use uh, some money to go buy a drone, and that's what I did. Uh, that project has had several iterations on it, and it looks vastly different down there by the Ninisca River in US 81. Uh, this was the first one I bought. It was $55. It was a bad idea. Um, it lasts about six minutes. So then I ended up buying a Mavic. It's one of the first Mavics that's come out. Uh, DJI has come out with several different iterations that are significantly better than this one. It was still pretty dang cool, but it was cool. It was small. It was foldable. Um, I, we used it intermittently for things like calculating quantities of uh, stockpiles. You can see right there, we calculated one that was part of this project and it was really accurate. I mean, we were within like a few percent. So with what we were using it for, um, like it was with basic small cameras uh, and we were able to achieve very good uh, accuracies. Anyway, so the way how I decided to do it is I got myself and the two people that can uh, be in charge of things. It was myself, my boss and my procurement officer um, told, showed them what drones can do. And we had some we had a new one on my desk a few weeks later. So anyway, since then, KDOT has been very involved. I was doing stuff out in the field, KDOT in the background. Um, has done some things to help create one of the safest programs in the nation. We actually, KDOT ranks, uh, ranked second in operations and safety organization, uh, according to the AUVSI. A uh, few months after that, we bought uh, 14 DJI Mavic 2s and Matrices, uh, two Matrices, and we've been using them. Uh, I wanted to show you who was it that won first place that year. Here's KDOT. We're usually known for our excellent highways. NASA won first place. So we are also known for creating one of the safest drone uh, operations in the nation. Um, we combined where, with uh, K-State. They also won second place in training and education. So that's how KDOT has implemented UAS into our service is by tr partnering with uh, K-State Salina, who does all of our training. So I'm going to clip through a few of these things here. So um, we got pilots, we are all current. We have about, you know, 20 to 30 pilots in KDOT right now, kind of fluctuates, but uh, let's see, let's keep going, keep going, keep going. This is all boring stuff. So we also require, one of the things that keeps us safe is we always require another person to be out there on the job with us while we're flying. That sometimes is hindering because it's difficult to find that other person to go out there and fly with us. But eventually we've been able to get this uh, program going for a long enough that we're able to get that happening. 
Uh, we can also have, they also gave us a way that we can fly without a VO provided certain things are working out there. And uh, it's very rare that we can do it, but it does happen. I've got one project where I can fly out there without anybody with me. So since then, we've had a few, pat like I said, we had a few batches of pilots. Uh, we do have a different version of uh, a drone that was bought by our bridge management, uh, which is significant because after we trained our third batch of pilots, you can't see what happened there, but uh, we've actually swapped out our, our drone fleet. So I had mentioned that we had originally bought about 14 uh, DJI drones. And since then we have, and this, this is just recently, this was back in July of this year, we swapped them out for um, Skydio drones. Reason being is they are uh, made in America. So we have 15 of those Skydio S2s, three Skydio X2s, and then a smattering of a few others that are still in use around the state. Uh, why was the switch? Like I had mentioned, there was, there have been a lot of DJI bands going around in different states. Our state was like a little bit worried that that may come our way. So we preemptively decided to swap them out because of all the bands that were going out, like, like I mentioned. So one of the cool things that we have done so far is with some of the bridges. Uh, this is one of those bridges that you have that the only way to do the proper inspection of it is with a uh, snooper truck. You have to shut down a lane of traffic of, uh, on top of it. And here is a picture of using one of our drones we were able to get up into this area and see some of the damage that was happening some of the corrosion so <clears throat> skydio platform they were able to fly in between these girders without any worries the skydio tells us that uh they are crash proof however i've crashed two of them so <clears throat> it was my fault not theirs they say but uh it was it was just a demonstration and uh, we tested the limits and we found those limits so but Majority of the time, they can be crash proof, so they are a very good product. Um, what's excellent about this, about their system, is that they are able to make a 3D model with a lot of their bridges and can show a lot of different things, especially so. Here's another bridge that we have out there up north uh, in Riley County. I believe this goes over uh, Milford Lake, not Milford. Um, can't think of the name. Tuttle Creek, Tuttle Creek. And it uh, is over a mile long. This is one that they have to shut down a lane and use a snooper truck to inspect every so often. So this is an example of one of the things that they are using and they are actually looking at doing a, uh, being able to fly underneath the deck and be able to get a map essentially of all of the delaminations that are happening underneath the deck uh, without shutting down a lane of traffic. That's pretty excellent. Also, uh, this is from John Culberson, our KDOT Bridge Management Engineer. He says, we're hopefully that we can use these drones as a tool to reduce the frequency which, which we have to use snooper trucks to inspect. FHWA requires that you have to be within an arm's reach of certain elements to be able to consider it to be, you know, check the box and say, hey, we've, we've inspected it. I know that Minnesota DOT is working with FHWA to hopefully make it so that you don't have to do it as often provided you have some sort of drone inspection. So we'll see where that happens. We're, like I said, we're, we're working on this. <clears throat> we also have a few others, like you had seen in the other, that other slide about some of the drones that KDOT has. This is one that uh, was purchased up in Salina. It is a fixed wing. It is able to take off vertically and then take off like a regular airplane. And I think I have a video that will maybe work. Do I click a button? Thank you, I'm sorry. Come on, I have to say yes. Do you click take off? That happens all autonomously, autonomously, automatically. Uh, a lot of these ones, you can plan the plan the flight way in advance and then send it off and it will go and do it and then land and you won't have to touch a button. So, and then it'll land, 
a similar fashion. So I'm going to skip that because skip that I want to talk about this next thing. So some of the things that we've done with KDOT. So um, for and after pictures. Here's a bridge that we have down on K55 that is in the middle of being replaced. Uh, I talked about this one. I talked about this was something that we had here in Wichita. Uh, I'm sure you might remember this. Breaking news right now at noon. If you're going to be hitting the road soon, listen up. Northbound I-135 is closed. So there's a fire at a construction site, and the fire is actually up on a platform. So that's where crews are working to get this fire under control. But in the meantime, authorities are diverting traffic to K-255. I push it again. Breaking news right now at noon. If you're going to be hitting the road soon, listen up. Northbound I-135 is closed. So there's a fire at a construction site, and the fire is actually up on a platform. So that's where crews are working to get this fire under control. But in the meantime, authorities are diverting traffic to K-250. Okay, that was just the end of it. Sorry. So uh, that was that was a bad day, to say the least. Uh, we had this concrete pier that was poured, and then it got cold. And so they put they turned their heaters on to keep the surface of it warm and then the heaters got a little bit too close to some of the false work and caught fire so it got really hot and then fire department came out and doused it got it really cold then it got cold again so we had negative 10 degrees or it was 10 degrees and i'm pretty sure there were icicles coming off of that false work after that so that is not the ideal conditions that you want for uh, concrete to be curing so this is one example where we got the drones out and we were able to take some analysis of this using non-destructive methods uh, to see whether or not that concrete had actually been um, damaged. So this was, this, this I think is the coolest video I have. Uh, this was taken, yes, yeah, so I gather with a Matrice 210 and a Zenmuse X2T, X-T2 dual sensor. So this can actually take thermal images in the air and they were able to look at this and analyze this to see whether or not there was any surface delaminations. Anyway, so long story short, they did actually end up still taking uh, cores on that pier to see whether or not that concrete had any abnormalities and it all looked fine. And the thermal imaging said it looked fine. So. We have that one data point that says, hey, this, this, all the data merged, it worked. Um, that, and it, which is good because that pier currently has traffic on it right now. So um, let's see, there's a number of other things that we've done. I'm going to cut this short here, but like, you know, we've gone out, we've seen our mixing strips uh, with all of our material. We go out there and we get, um, we're able to look at one of these spots here and find the volume of what one of these spots, what one of these piles has. So create reports, send it out to people. It's good stuff. I think, I think I'm pretty much at the end here. It is. So that was it. Any questions for me? That's very fine. Yes. Hey, uh, AJ, curious about your fleet and how do we get our hands on your hand-me-downs? Those were sold. They were given back to Skydio. Uh, there was actually a buyback program for when we were when we did that. So from what I hear, they use them for uh, Ukraine. Actually, um, it was it was actually for I'm, I was kidding on that. They use them for um, uh, anti UAS training. So people that are being trained to take them down, they use these. They use the ones that we are sell selling them back for that. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> Any other questions for AJ?